Howdy YouTube. So I got my X220 here. It's missing, oh, it's missing some screws, but today I'm gonna show you how to make a core boot BIOS with C BIOS payload and uh, VGA BIOS ROM. Okay, so the first thing you need to do to core boot the X220 is get the OEM BIOS to get some binary blobs. So I set up the Raspberry Pi using the information off the Weberboot site, and you can get uh, the information on other places on the internet. Uh, this picture has a neat little diagram, but anyways, after that, I just kind of set up everything. I just plugged in all the pins and got some masking tape out to label them, because even though the Raspberry Pi uh, pinouts kind of stay the same, depending on what flash clip you use, the uh, flash clips are sometimes Swake 8 and Swake 16. For various laptops on the X220, it's uh, Swake 8, but I like having them labeled for easy removal. So I used a Pomona flash clip, and I like these because they seem to be a little bit higher quality than some of the others I've seen, and they're not too expensive. Anyways, though, uh, the next thing you have to do is disassemble the X220. So, I uh, actually, this X220 is already disassembled. That screw is stripped or doesn't come out. But anyways, though, uh, let's pretend I actually disassembled it. The hardest part of disassembling it is actually taking off the keyboard. You gotta get your fingers in like a weird position. But after that, you just unplug the cable and on my, a, I typically don't even plug the mouse pad back in. I think it's actually covered in electrical tape. But anyways, uh, that's the little uh, flash clip there. You're gonna put the clip on later. So before you put the clip, you need to go figure out which way does the clip actually go on. So I was being lazy, of course, and look up a data sheet and find out which pins or you know do what and what you need for that. But I just looked at a tutorial someone made and they had the uh, little pin out for the clip and which way it was supposed to face. So a lot of this stuff you can actually ignore now because you don't have to compile core boot on the Raspberry Pi. You can just uh, get it from the package repository. So all you have to do is sudo apt-get install flash ROM and it's a pretty self-explanatory process. Just ignore the weird character on the screen right now. But anyways, after that, you can put the flash clip on and start up your Raspberry Pi, but there is still one more thing you have to do before you can read off the flash clip. And for that, you just need to do, you need to edit the Raspberry Pi's config. I think it's sudo raspi config and it's under advanced options and you just enable SPI. But after that, you can read the flash clip. It does take a little bit longer than you expect and for some reason it work without setting an SPI speed. But you, you can set an SPI speed and of course larger numbers it will read a little bit faster. So if you're having a bad connection, you might wanna try lowering that. And after that, you just run the MD5 sum to check if it is the same. And if it's the same, you can use that to compile core boot. So, okay, so now that you have a copy of the OEM BIOS, you can begin to make your core boot BIOS. So, after you install the build dependencies, you're pretty much just gonna need to use git to get the core boot code. So, I guess at this point, since that's gonna take a little bit, I should kind of explain the general process. So. First, you um, need to uh, get all the code for core boot and ME cleaner if you want. ME cleaner is just a Python script though. And then you're gonna use IDF tool to split up the ROM. So what will that will give you is a series of binary blobs. One of them is the uh, Intel ME and you can use ME cleaner on that with the default settings work beautifully on the X220. Also, this step is optional, but I would recommend it because it will make your system a little bit more secure and 
get rid of the uh, Intel ME or effectively disable it. So from there, um, I've also included a unnecessary step, but maybe necessary if you're uh, gonna use some operating systems that Stallman would uh, disapprove of. Well, actually, that might be a little bit vague because he disapproves of a lot of Linux distributions that include non-free firmware, but I have to use uh, some stuff with Visual Studio for one of my MIS courses. So we're including a VGA BIOS. And how I got that is I used something called UEFI tool, which uh, the footage for actually didn't turn out too well just because the uh, footage here is downscaled. So, but what I did from there is kind of just use the normal X220 BIOS and just searched for, I think it's VGA BIOS or something using the search tool and it gave me a little position on the chip and then you export that and you get your VGA BIOS blob. Um, you don't have to do that for the X220, but some other systems you do have to do that for, for core boot. So anyways, um, after you have all that stuff done, and have all your blobs, you just need to go into the config file and basically just go in and add paths to all the binary blobs you're gonna include. So another thing is uh, here we're using a CBIOS payload, but you can also use a uh, GRUB payload. And, are, and there's many other payloads, but CBIOS and GRUB are the only ones I've tried. And you pretty much just go there and then you go through and look for all the little, I guess, paths you gotta fill out and then you pretty much uh, put in the path to your blobs that you made with the IDF tool. And after you're done configuring that, you can um, move on to actually making the I guess making the core boot ROM and compiling. So right here, I'm just entering in the path for the VGA BIOS. Um, I actually uh, messed up the paths the first time I compiled this, but either way, um, you can just compile it again and it won't take that long. As you can see here, this is the footage for actually making the uh, I guess uh, VGA BIOS blob, but it's a little bit hard to read, so I just kind of cut over it. So this is the uh, first compilation attempt, and it uh, will take a fair bit of time the first time you compile it, because it has to build the tool chain and all that, but if you just mess up a setting, you can just run uh, make again and make sure to specify CPU number or else it'll take a long amount of time. Um, I noticed hyper threading doesn't really uh, help too much, but you, um, you just specify the amount of CPUs as your cores are. So if you have an X220, it'd be two. Um, I think the system has dual eight core Xeon, so it's 12. So. Yeah, you just run uh, make cross GCC i386 for the i386 architecture, and then uh, make IASL, and then finally just make. So I uh, got bored while it was compiling and uh, wanted to play Tetris, but the default controls are terrible, so I had to apt get source and change them. But anyways, after that, you should be, well, done. You can just flash it and it should boot up. So I guess that is about how you make a core boot ROM for the X220. It's a little bit of a basic overview. Um, if you need like some very specific details, I'll like include the little cheat sheet I used in the bottom, but Overall, that's about the process, and good luck with your own uh, core boot build, and have fun, I guess. Have a good one.